Hey, thank you for watching again and thank you for staying tuned to another video. I just want to come in today and also talk about hair. I haven't spoken about hair in so, 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 so long, but I promise to put out more videos about natural hair, of course, because I am natural. I wanted to come and start like from scratch from the beginning and what better way to come and talk about transitioning. Um, those who decide to transition, not everybody has to, um, and others do big chops. Let's go ahead and get started. I have six tips for transitioners and you should do what I've done that has helped me and what I think are kind of the best ways to go through about transitioning. Just going on the natural hair journey. We're gonna start with the first one. I sorry, I have it on my phone, so don't judge me. Use little to no heat. It is the best way to go about transitioning because you're not, you're not damaging your hair. You're not coming close to damaging your hair or having a freak out that you may damage your hair. It's just best to use no heat. And there's other styles that you can do that can counter you not using heat at the moment. But of course, that's up to you. If you choose to use heat, beware of the signs that you may, may get heat damage. And that is a possibility. Whether you use a heat protectant or not, you may have a possible chance of getting heat damage, just letting you know. And it does alter your curl or alter your curl pattern. And when you're transitioning and when you're using no heat, you're actually getting the actual texture that would come into your roots. Um, from your scalp then having it to be altered by damaged hair by damaged natural hair so you want to come in fresh as can be and actually working with your um, your actual natural hair as it's growing so it's best to do it that way that's the best possible way because I'm learning new styles and whatnot yes, as I was saying if you do decide to add heat to your hair use a heat protectant and spray your hair in sections before applying heat so you want to section your hair um, maybe four or six and then every time you, either if you're blow drying or whatnot, spray the section that you're doing first, comb it out, and then apply heat, apply the amount of heat that you want to. It should be on low to medium setting um, for flat iron, for flat irons, I mean for uh, blow dryers. So exactly. So every time you're using a heating tool, you're always applying the spray, the heat protectant. The second tip is to stay away from styles that can give tension to your edges. And that simply means anything is something that looks like this, but it's really pulling at your edges. You don't want it to be so, you know, so much on your edges that you're losing your hair and your edges are getting very fragile. So you want to be careful of what styles you're doing and how tight you're making them like you really don't need it to be that tight like braids or whatnot you can release some of that tension it doesn't need to be extremely extremely tight like save your head you know save your hair <laughs> there's a lot of styles that don't require tension to your hair so find styles or you can use the same style but don't make your hair or your style so tight that <clears throat> it becomes like hard to sleep or um, you get headaches from and all that stuff you want to release the pressure from your, your scalp and your, your hair and whatnot because the more you you bring in tension styles to your scalp or your edges it will get fragile and weak and they will break off it happens all the time some low maintenance styles I was telling you about for example there are Swiss styles <clears throat> at the time of transitioning if you're if you haven't, yeah, the time of transitioning, it's best to broaden the ends of the twist so that it blends in, so that you're relaxed and blends in with the root, of, the roots of your hair. Um, you don't want like a twist out all nice and pretty like this at the at the root, and then it, it looks so straight at the bottom because of your relaxed ends. It's really not cute. It just makes your hair look like, what are you doing? What are you trying to do today? So. <laughs> When you do a twist out or you put twist in your hair and you rod the ends you don't have to rod them all the way up to your root but you rod them up at least halfway so that your ends are curled and so that it really matches or it blends in with the natural look or the natural hairstyle that you're trying to achieve and that's the same thing that goes for braid outs the only difference is it's just braids you can do rod sets just rod just the the rods alone 
where you can do high or low buns, etc. There's numerous and numerous and numerous of styles that you can do that aren't um, putting tension on your edges. So please, 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 please stay away from that. Third one is the third step is find a sulfate free shampoo and conditioner that works best for your hair. You need to find a sulfate free shampoo that works best. You can have, at, I, I say have at least one. Why? Because you want to rid the dirt and rid um, the product that you put in your hair from the last time so that your hair shaft is clean. And then you can go back with um, a sulfate free shampoo that really nourishes your hair instead of drying your hair. Sulfate dries your hair and your scalp. So, you can wash with sulfate and then come back around and wash your hair with a sulfate free shampoo on one sitting. So conditioner is supposed to do the same. It nourishes your hair, your hair shaft, your hair shaft. You can try numerous products like Shea Moisture. I tried Shea Moisture when I first did it. I tried um, Organics with an X um, and I'll put them here too so you can see. And they're both available at Walgreens. And you can try the Lisa Rachel, which is very um, for sele at Selective Marshalls or, or uh, Ross. And it's just, I call it the fake one, but it works just just at just the same. So those products are pretty good when I first started. Now, the only difference is when I cut off my hair, Shea Moisture just wasn't it anymore. Or Organics. It just, it's, it's just different. Like my hair just didn't react the same. And that, that's okay. It happens. Nothing wrong with my hair. It's just it's just a new texture. It's a new day. You find something else that works. That's it. There's no big old dramatic issue. It's just you find something else that works and you stick with it. I suggest that you wash your hair every two to three weeks. Um, yeah, every two to three weeks. And this is your time to start trying to to comb your hair when it's damp. Or when it's wet do not comb your hair when it's dry it doesn't react the same way when you have relaxed hair you know you can just comb it we used to carry around the uh, the um, the fine tooth comb or whatnot tail comb and just comb it everywhere we go can't do that you cannot do that you can't comb this everywhere you go <laughs> it's a struggle so I never comb my hair when it's dry even now I never comb my hair when it's dry that's like I'm asking for trouble. I'm like handing trouble in my hand. Don't do that. You comb your hair when it's moisturized, when it's damp, and or when it's wet when you come out the shower and come wash your hair or whatever, and you comb your hair. That's when you comb your hair. And when you're combing your hair, comb your hair in sections. Part that mug in sections. Part it in six at least or four, however you want to do it. Whatever is easier, if your hair is big like mine, or if your head is big like mine, cut it, in, cut it, divide it in fours, and comb your hair in sections. And if it's too thick for you, if it's hurting, part it some more, and then and then comb that section out. But you don't want to comb like an entire, like your entire hair, like that. You're gonna hurt yourself. I've seen people do this, or I have conversations with people that have done this comb your hair in sections cool cool step number four this is a time that you get into easy going tools and i mean um your tools can be can make almost every style of breeze the tools are bobby pins wide tooth comb a hair bonnet clips and hair ties they are so easy and you're going to use them throughout the entire time that you have hair natural hair so clips I mean by these the clips the, the little white clips or here we go clips like this or just any clips that holds down hair that is not gonna snag your hair this is really not snagging my hair but it holds your hair down in sections so you can part your hair in sections and leave it alone and work on another section of hair while the other section is put away and it's you know confined or whatever so sections are great hair bonnets you wear it every night to sleep hair bonnets or satin pillowcases you wear them every night to sleep or you sleep on it every night 
Um, this basically keeps the moisture in your hair and prevents your hair from drying. That's exactly why we wear it and that's exactly why we sleep on satin bonnets or satin, I'm sorry, satin uh, pillowcases and whatnot. Um, bobby pins. Bobby pins are a lifesaver. There's no better way than bobby pins, boy, I tell you. Bobby pins, they have them short, they have them long, they have them thick, they have them very small. So, um, they hold up your hair you can crisscross your bobby pins you can style your hair in certain ways like my hair is up right now although there's a clip right here but that's besides the point <laughs> but i would regularly i would bobby pin this up there's many 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 different styles that you can do when you have loads and loads and loads of bobby pins and it will stay it will fall down if you put it in properly it will stay love me some bobby pins and a wide tooth comb there's no more like I said before there isn't any tail combs or small tooth combs that you would really carry until you your hair is straight again like if you decide to fly iron your hair or whatnot this time it's a wide tooth comb because you don't want your curls to get snagged or to get yeah to get snagged or to break you want your curls to be uniformed and aligned and detangled that's why there's a wide tooth comb so your curls can be intact and when you're combing by the way comb from the end to the root not from the root to the end the root to the end you're asking for the devil to come knocking at your door okay number five moisturizers and serums moisturizers and serums Shea Moisture has a few and other brands I'm just putting out what people usually um, go to uh those are the brands that are pretty much universal and um sometimes for most people it doesn't work for their hair me included i my hair does not like shea moisture shea moisture products sit on my hair but if you're watching this and you try shea moisture and, and it works then it works for you but it's not working for me but since it's universal i am putting that brand out there and um, letting you know exactly that these are the one one of the brands you can try and it just might work just for you but of course there's mixed chicks there's a bunch of other products that you can use some natural moisturizers um, that are creamy or it can be creamy is uh, shea butter pure shea butter there is Cantu of course that's another brand um, there's pure shea butter that you can get at Whole Foods or online of course anywhere online you go you google shea butter and it will pop up pure shea butter um or organic shea butter so serums are just the thinner moisturizers they're the people my hair takes my hair loves creamy 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 moisturizers it, does, it doesn't really do well with um serums it depends on the serum if it's a moisturizing serum it doesn't really do well it loves creams it eats creams so yes serums uh you might have different hair from me so you can try serums as well you have to see and kind of dabble with what may work this is really your time to sit here and and try to figure out what your hair might like and what it might not like you can find it at of course you can find i forgot to tell you pure shea butter at um your local beauty supply store that is ethnic or black i should say just put it out there and last but not least the sixth step that everybody 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 should do do your re Search, Lord, do your research. <laughs> Learn different oils that are great for your hair. Learn different sealants. Sealants, the oils are some. Some oils are sealants, which I forgot to mention. But some oils are sealants. Look up why people go natural. It's fine to do that. There's different reasons why. There, you might get influenced to just keep on going with this little journey. Where are what are the health benefits from it? How can I protect my hair? From the weather or whatever different 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 research you can do on natural hair and sometimes it can be very fun depending on how you look at it so don't take this approach as a negative note you should be happy you should have fun with it i did i i didn't find any like fall as if i want to go back to relax hair relax hair was great and then 
it started to dwindle down and really thin out my hair and so i started missing how my hair used to be so thick and this is why i'm at this state right now at three years research you want to go on youtube as if you're doing it right now go on youtube and you type in the styles that you want to see for transitioners like transitioning styles um moisturizer moisturizing reviews anything you want to know in life is on youtube youtube is your best friend for free use it utilize it it's great research there's a bunch of people out there now that is doing amazing is teaching us so much so many things so just open your eyes and pay attention and make sure you have loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of fun don't forget to rate comment and subscribe bye